Okay, so I'm looking at P633A, and it says, Iron Hill began August with 70 units of iron inventory that cost $25 each. During August, the company completed the following inventory transactions. So what you want to know about Chapter 6 is we're, we're looking at cost flow. So when we sell these items, that's, that's when we actually cost them out, right? Remember, we, according to the matching principle, we don't recognize that inventory is an expense until the item actually sells. So we're going to be moving these items out of inventory into cost of goods sold um, in conjunction with the sale of those items. Okay, so what we're concerned with here is we're concerned with determining cost of goods sold. We're not really concerned with the sales price at this point. So that's what this table is here. This is um, a table and you notice there's three macro columns. There's a column for purchases, a column for cost of goods sold, and a column for the remaining inventory on hand. That's the remaining balance in inventory. Okay, And they, they want me to prepare this cost, this table for you, which helps us determine cost of goods sold using the first in first out method that's called FIFO so what it's saying is the older items are the ones that we're going to put into cost of goods sold first the first items that we brought in are the first items that we're going to cost out does that make sense okay how many read okay not even the newspaper today okay all right <coughs> so what we'll start with is we'll start with this inventory on hand on August 1st if you look up here right we got 70 units at $25 each so I got 70 and they cost me $25 each okay and then what you're doing here is you're just extending out that value so you're gonna take 70 times 25 and that's the total cost that you have on hand Really, that's your beginning inventory balance, okay? Now, as the <coughs> month goes by, <coughs> on August 3rd, they sell, say that we sell 60 units, okay? We sell 60 units for $74, but that $74 is not what we're concerned with at this point. We're concerned with putting a cost on those 60 units. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in cost of goods sold, I'm going to say we sold 60 units, okay, and they're coming from the $25 bucket, because we only have one bucket at this time, or only one inventory layer, and it's a $25 inventory layer. So I'll bring 25 over, okay? I'm sorry, I'm bringing 60 over at 25. So that leaves me 1,500, okay? So I have 60 units that I'm going to cost out at $25, and the total cost is going to be 1,500, 60 times 25, okay? Now, what you have to do here is you have to ask yourself, how many do I have left after I make that sale? How many do I have left? I start 10, right? I have 10 units, right? And those 10 units are at $25. So I have 10 units at $25, which has a total value of $250. Okay? You follow what I'm doing, right? This is going to be the same for at least two of the methods because you only have one layer of inventory when this first sale occurs. Okay? Now we make a purchase. <laughs> you see from your data table over here on August 8th, we purchase 80 units at 43. So we'll go, we'll keep the purchases in a separate column and we'll go say 80 units at 43, not 73. So 80 times 43, right? That gives me 3,440. Okay. Now, when that's over, you come out here to the inventory column, what do we have? More inventory. We have more inventory, but we still have those 10 units at 25. So you gotta put those in there. 10 at 25, which is 250. And now you have a new layer. 
you have a $43 layer. So I'm going to put in my 80 at 43. <coughs> OK? Now I have two layers of inventory. I have a $25 layer, and then I have a $43 layer. OK? Now, on the 21st, our company sells 70 units. And they're selling them for $79. Okay, but remember, our concern here is to figure out what we're going to cost them out at. Right? What we're going to show as our expense, basically. Not our revenue, but as our expense. Okay? So if I'm doing the first in, first out method, I got 70 units that I have to put a cost on. Right? I'm going to pull from the first layer, from the, o from the oldest layer first. So the first items that I acquired are the first items to get costed out. Okay? So if you just <laughs> isolate this here, where I'm circling my pointer, I got I to gotta put a cost on 70 units. Well, if I'm going to pull the first layer first, I'm going to pull from this $25 layer. And I'm going to take all 10 of them. Because right? I need 70. So all, all 10 of them is not enough, but I'll take all of that layer. Right? If there had been 80 in that layer, 80 units, then I would only take 70. But there's only 10 there. So I'm going to take all 10, uh, 10 of them. I'm sorry. And they're $25 units. It's not letting me backspace on that. Hold on. i got to get that zero out of there. OK. 10 units at 25, so that's $250. Now I need 60 more because I sold 70, right? So the the... 60 more that I need are going to come from the next layer down. That's the newest layer, the $43 layer. So I'm going to go 60 units times $43. And I'll use my calculator for that. So if we were to add the 250 and the, the 2580 that would be the cost of goods sold on this specific sale, on the sale of the 70 units. That would be your cost of goods sold. It's not going to be your sales revenue. Okay? Your sales revenue is the 70 times 79. But we're not concerned about sales revenue at this point in time. We're just concerned about figuring out the cost of goods sold. Okay? Any questions so far? OK, I take that as a no. <laughs> okay. Now, what happens? Well, you have to always balance after every transaction. So I'm going to figure out what I have left in inventory. Well, if I had 90 units, right? I, I had 80 plus 10, <coughs> and I just sold 70 of them, right? Watch, watch where my pointer goes. Before I made this sell, I had 90 because I had 10 units at 25 and I had 80 at 43. That's 90 units. Mm -hmm. And then I made a sell of 70, right? I'm left with 20, right? 90 minus 70 is 20, okay? I've liquidated the $25 layer. So we're not going to need to show, we don't need to show the $25 layer. We only have units that were $43 left. So all 20 of these units are $43 each. Okay, so 20 times 43, 860 or so, right? Yeah. Questions? Okay. So notice, you notice the common thing here is I'm always rebalancing after every transaction, whether I make a purchase, whether I make a sale. In this inventory on hand column, we're figuring out the, the ending balance in, in, in uh, inventory. Okay, So now on the 30th, we make a purchase of 20 units at 49, meaning at $49 a unit. So we can take 20 units times $49, and that gives me 980. Okay. So now when I balance my, my inventory, when I figure out my ending inventory, I'm going to take I'm going to take the oldest layer, which is the one that we had before the purchase, 20 at 43. 
that's 860 and then I got a new layer 20 at 49 So far, so good. So now, the thing is, to get the totals, right? If you look at your far right set of columns, meaning this inventory on hand and the three columns that come under it, all I really need to do is get the last, get the combination of the last two lines because I've been keeping a running tally all along the way, right? So really, I have 40 units, right? And the total cost of those, us those units, 40, would be my 980 plus uh, 860, right? What is that going to be? 1840, is that right? You might want to double check the math on that. 1840, okay. That's the ending inventory balance. You're adding the last two layers. Yeah. I'm adding the last two layers because that's all that I really have left on hand, right? Now the other columns, we gotta add the whole column downward because we didn't keep a running tally on that, right? On our purchases, we bought 100 units, 80 plus 20, okay? And the total cost of those units would be 3,440 plus 980. And then this is the big one, the one I'm doing last year, the middle set of columns. That's the whole, I, one of the main reasons for doing this table is to figure out your cost of goods sold. So I'll add up all of the units that I sold. So that's 130 units, okay? And then I'll add up the total extended cost on all of those units. So 1,500 plus 250 plus Okay, see how we did. Questions on that? Okay, so the, the key thing in this is that when we have, when we have this cost flow convention called FIFO, FIFO stands for first in, first out. So we're gonna pick from the older layer first when we put those items into cost of goods sold. Okay, when we move them out of inventory and put them into cost of goods sold, we're gonna take the first, first ones that we brought in are the first ones to go out as cost of goods sold. Okay? You guys okay with that? Okay. So now we're gonna do LIFO, L-I-F-O. That means the last items that came in are gonna be the first ones that we put out into cost of goods sold. So it's almost the opposite. Right. So I'm going to take the same data, and I can tell you this. <coughs> that first sale, right, up through this line, it's going to look the same. Okay. Up through the eight. Because we really only have one layer of inventory, okay, sitting there. So whether it's FIFO or whether it's LIFO, it's going to pull from that same one layer that we have. So if you wanted to get really lazy about it, you could copy everything down through the 8th of August. I have a question. Yes? It says one or more of the beginning inventory amounts that you have entered are incorrect. What is the beginning inventory? The beginning inventory comes from this first line up here. See? So you might not have the same numbers as I. I have 70 units at 25. Yours may be different, okay? So I'm gonna, I'll do that again, and it's the same, right? We got 70 at that 20, is, 25. Is the okay, you missed the total cost, okay? So don't forget to put in the, the extended amount. When I, when I say extended, I mean you gotta multiply 70 by 25 to get that total. So 1750, <coughs> okay? And then we make a purchase of 80 at 43. Fifteen hundred. So now we got seventy. I'm sorry, I skipped the line. We sell, right? We sell sixty. Okay. 
I'm sorry. So that's we take from that twenty-five dollar layer. Right. Okay. Don't forget that first sale. So sixty at twenty-five, fifteen hundred. So we're gonna have ten left at twenty-five. This is what we did earlier, right? It's what we did earlier because there's only one layer of inventory, but it's gonna be different. Right? When we get to a certain point, it's going to be different. But not until after August 8th. So on August 8th, we buy 80 at 43. So we already did that math up here. 80 at 43 is 3,440. So we're going to have 10 at 25 after that purchase. And we're going to have 80 at 43. Okay. Now that, this is where it gets different. Okay. So now we, we're doing LIFO, right? So on the 21st, we sell 70 units. Okay. I'm going to pick from the more, most recent layer of inventory. So I'm going to be picking from this most recent layer to cost out my 70 units. So I can pull all 70 units from that $43 layer because I have 80 units sitting in that layer. So I'm gonna put 70, for my cost of goods sold, I'm gonna take 70 units out of this $43 layer. Okay. So we'll go 70 times 43, and we may have done that math up there for a different purpose already, but no. I'll just go ahead and do it again, okay. So if I took 70 out of the most recent layer, okay, how many units do I have left? Right? Well, I had 90 units and I sold 70, so I have 20 units left. And those 20 units are going to be comprised of 10 at 25. Because I didn't go back far enough. I didn't sell enough units to get all the way back into the $25 layer. Right? So I still have that original layer of 10 at 25. <coughs> and then I have 10 at 43. Because I, I sold 70 of the 80 that I originally had. So 10 at 43 is 430. Okay. Questions? Why sell the last one first? What, you can choose the convention you want to use. A lot of times it's for tax purposes because. Oh, it's LIFO and TIFO. Yeah, life for, you might go with LIFO in times of uh, rising prices because you can put a higher cost into your cost of goods sold. I see. And if you deduct a higher cost of goods sold, that lowers your net income. So you're going to pay less tax because you have a lower net income. So that's probably one of the primary reasons for doing that. See, it's, it's up to the company as to how they want to do this, right? There's some rules though that go with it. If you choose a certain convention, you're kind of stuck with that. You cannot be switching every year. Yeah, yeah. So that's one of the main reasons they would do that. Um, okay, now finally, we make a purchase, <coughs> same purchase, 20 units at 49 on the 30th. So that's 980, okay? And then I'm going to rebalance, okay? So now I'm going to have three layers of inventory. I'm going to have the original 10 at 25. So 250. I'm going to have 10 at 43. I'm just pulling that down from the prior transaction. And then I got this new layer. I got 20 at 49. So like I said before, for the inventory on hand, you just have to add up what happened in that, what's in that last inventory on hand set of boxes. So these last three lines, that gives me 40 units. And then if I add up, if I add up the total, so 250 plus 430 plus 980, 
My in ending inventory balance is 1,660. Okay. Now I'll come over here and add up my purchases column. I sold 100. Same, we, same, we sold the same number of units. It's just the way we chose to cost them out is different. Okay. So our purchases number is going to be exactly the same. Because we still spent the same amount of money to buy this stuff. It's just the way we chose to cost the items out. Okay, We sold 130. Now the cost of goods sold is going to be different than it was in FIFO because of the convention that we chose. Okay, So that'll be 4,510, right? I'll scroll back up. So just take a peek, right? See, we ended up putting the more expensive items into cost of goods sold because the prices are rising. So if, if we're doing LIFO and prices are rising, <coughs> then the more expensive items, the more recent items, get put into cost of goods sold. Okay, so you notice our total cost of goods sold under LIFO is 4510 When you look at our total cost of goods sold under FIFO, it's low, lower, right? It's 4330 but we still spent the same amount of money to buy these things. See, our purchases column shows 4,420 under both conventions, under both LIFO and FIFO. Okay. Questions on that? Okay. Well, it's a good starter problem because if you wanted to do a bigger problem, then we would have all of these transactions going on. Maybe we could have 15 purchases and 15 sales and they could be all spaced in and out of there and that would really give you a lot of practice but this is a good um, introduction to this stuff okay, you can really see where the difference is Wh what's happening after August 8 that's where it really gets different okay are you ready for average okay this weighted average method sometimes called a moving average because we're going to re-average every time we do something okay now we start with 70 at 25 just like we did before and I'll borrow my math from up there 1750 All right. and then when we make that first sale we're selling 60 <coughs> We're going to use the 25, so you got 1,500, and then you're left with 10 at 25. So nothing really different up until this point. Yeah. Now you make a purchase. Okay, so we purchase 80 at 43. Okay, and that was 3440. Now this is where we have to do an average. Okay. And it's not just a straight average. I cannot just take $25 a unit and add it to 43 and divide by 2. See, let's suppose we <coughs> did that. If I took 25 plus 43, that's the unit cost, right? And I took the result of that addition and divided by 2, I get $34 a unit. But the problem with that is that's just giving, that's giving each um, unit cost equal weighting. When we really have more $43 units than we have $25 units, right? You can see right here, we have more, right where I'm putting my mouse. We got 80 $43 units. We only have 10 $25 units. So we have to give more weight to the $43 units. They got to take more of the average on, or when you do the average, they got to get a little more um, say in the whole thing, if you want to call it that. Okay. So the way we do this is we're going to add the total cost together. So I'm going to add the 250, right, from the $25 units that I still have on hand, the total cost of those $25 units, to the 3,440, which is the total cost of the 80 of the $43 units. Okay, so we just take 250 plus 3,440.
That's the total cost of the units that I have on hand after the August 8th purchase, 3690 Why don't we just go ahead and drop it in the total cost column? Okay. <coughs> now that 3690 represents how many units? 90. 90, right? So why don't we just put 90 over here? Okay. So for me to get the unit cost, which is going to be our weighted average unit cost, I just have to take the total 3,690 and divide it by 90. You see what I'm doing? Okay. That's going to be a lot different than the $34 that we came up with. That's $41. Okay. That's how you do the weighted average. You have to, <laughs> you have to give the, the layers of inventory that have more units in them more weight when you do the average. So you can't just average the, the cost per unit. You have to take that total cost and divide by the total number of units. Okay. So what happens now when we make a sale? On the 21st, when we sell 70 units, we'll just cost them out at $41. We're going to cost them out at the average cost that we have available, right? So my next 70 units that I sell here are going to be costed out at $41, straight, okay? So we'll go 70 times 41. That gives me 2,870. Okay. So if I had 90 and I sold 70, how many do I have left? 20 at 41, right? I have 20 at 41. So what's that going to be? 8, 20? You better rely on your calculator. Yeah. Okay. Now we make a purchase on the 30th. We buy 20 more units at 49. No. Now we're going to have 40 units and you would tell me, yeah, it's probably going to be the same as just adding the prices, the cost and dividing by two, but we'll still go through the whole drill, right? 20 at 49 is 980. Okay. So if I take the 980 plus 820, okay, that looks, sure looks like it's going to be 1,800 total, right? 820 plus 980, okay? Just to be sure. Okay. And that represents 40 <coughs> units, because I got the 20 that I have left over plus the 20 that I bought. So that's 40 units. So you can take 1,800 and divide by 40. And I come up with a $45 per unit average cost, okay? So this one is easy for inventory because you don't have to look at multiple lines. You already have that ending balance sitting there in that last line. So I'll just drop down the 1,800 and drop down the 40 units, okay? So 40 and 1,800. Oops, and just like we did before when we added up our cost of goods sold column. You got 130 units that sold. Um, and the total cost on those units, or the total amount that we costed out was 4,370. Okay. You bought 100 units, 80 plus 20, and then the total price that you paid, or the total cost of those purchases will be 4,420, and I just added these two. Okay? Questions? Okay, now, now there's a little redundancy here, because it's really just taking the numbers you already figured out and putting them into these boxes. So I'll move the calculator out of the way so we don't, we don't um, think that it's more complicated than that. It's asking me the cost of goods sold amount for August using FIFO, and we'll go back up to FIFO. 
So my cost of goods sold, total cost, 4330 for FIFO. Okay. And then the next one is probably going to be asking me about LIFO, L-I-F-O. Make sure you pull from the correct table. So this one says LIFO, 4510 And then I bet the last one is asking me for weighted average, and it's coming right from the cost of goods sold column in the weighted average table, 4,370. Okay? Now they want me to figure out gross profit. So this is where those sales figures come into play. Um, remember from our data, the list of transactions? Our sales revenue will be the number of units we sold times the sale price. Okay, that's different than the cost, right? So now we have to figure out our sales revenue. Okay, so if I take 60 units from the August 3rd sale times the selling price of 74, I get 4,440 on that first sale. Okay, I'm gonna put that in memory, memory plus that's my first sale I need to figure out how much I made on the second sale so 70 units times $79 so that's 5530 I'm gonna add that to what I have in memory okay so we'll go plus memory recall my total sales revenue for the whole month of August was 9970 I'll put that into my sales revenue column. And i got to tell you this. That's not going to be any different for all three methods, right? Because it's really just the cost that's different. The sales revenue is the same. You sold it for the same price. You're just showing what it would look like under the three different cost methods. So I might as well drop that in for all three of them, okay? And then we'll go ahead and figure out cost of goods sold. I'm sorry, we're going to figure out gross profit, right? Gross profit is the difference, just like in Chapter 5, it's the difference between sales revenue and cost of goods sold. So we're going to have a different gross profit for all three methods because we're going to be pulling down different cost of goods sold figures. Okay, so it's just going to be a matter of doing some arithmetic. Wait, where did your sales revenue come from? If you multiply the sales price, times the units sold. On August 3rd? Well, you want to do the whole month, so you have to do August 3rds, and you have to do August 21st, and add, and add them together to get the total sales revenue for the month. Okay. Now it's nice that we have all the cost of goods sold figures sitting here, we can just pull them down. Um, FIFO is 4330, LIFO is 4510, and Average cost is forty three seventy. Okay. And then all we really have to do is some subtraction. That thing turned blue all over the place. Okay. So if I take nine thousand nine hundred seventy minus four thousand three hundred and thirty. I will get my gross profit under the FIFO method. Okay. If I take 9,970 and I subtract 4,510, I get my gross profit under the LIFO method. Okay. And then if I do same kind of math, 9,970 minus 4,370, I get my gross profit under the weighted average method. Okay, wait, um, I'm still lost in the sales revenue. I wonder if it makes sense. How to get sales revenue? Okay. So, in my case, <coughs> this might help. Okay, so if you took your data, where did my data go? There it is. Instead of doing it with a calculator, I'll show you this way. 
Okay, so on August 3rd, I sell 60 units for 74. Okay, so this is the units, and this is the selling price. Okay, so if we took we take the number of units times the selling price. Okay. <coughs> that should give us that should give us the total sales revenue for that specific <laughs> sale. Okay. Now we only have two sales. We have one on August 3rd and we have one on August 20th. So we'll have <coughs> August 21st. Right? I sell on August 21st 70 units at 79. Okay? So if I do the math according to the way I have this diagram, I'll take 60 units times 74 and then I'll take 70 units times 79, oh. and then if we were to add the two totals, right, so 4,440 plus 5,530, that would be your total revenue, or they call it total sales revenue, right? So you gotta make sure you're, and we didn't use that, we didn't use these sales prices earlier on because we were more concerned about figuring out what cost of goods sold is, right, what it cost us or the way we decided to cost it out, right? Not how much we sold it for. So what I just figured out is how much we sold it for. Okay, that's different than what we're costing it out at. Does that make more sense? Yeah. Okay, good, good. Okay. So if you wanted to purely maximize your profit, you probably would go with the um, it looks like the FIFO method, right? The FIFO method is giving me the highest gross profit. That's higher than the other two. So if we surely wanted to maximize our gross profit, profit I would say FIFO. 